So today I'm going to show you how to create a student management system using vb.net and Windows form. So I'll be using Visual Studio 2022 and SQL Server Express uh, to create this project. So after this is complete, the code is uh, written, everything is done. I will show you how to uh, use the form. Basically, you can add new students, you can uh, update students and you can delete the records. The prerequisite is that you should have Visual Studio 2022. You should have Visual Basic, which is vb.net and you should have SQL Server Express or any SQL Server database. So once you have these things, open Visual Studio 2022 and click on create a new project. Here you can filter it out using Visual Basic, Windows and all project types or you can select here desktop and you can see on top Windows Form, Forms app is coming up. So select this, click on next. Give a name to your project and also you can select the location. You can see that I have changed my location and I am now giving a name to my project. So click on next button and here you can see all the uh, dotted versions that are, the, those are installed in my system are coming up. So I'll use the latest one, which is dotted 8.0. Click on create. Okay, now as you can see, now the project has been created. So before we start uh, adding anything here to this form, let's go to database and add a database here. So this is the SQL Server Object Explorer. If you can't see this, you have to go to view and you have to select SQL Server Object Explorer here. Now go back to this explorer now i have some databases already created so that is why it is appearing here in your case it could be uh, blank uh, if there is nothing created then it there will be nothing which will uh, nothing that will appear here so now right click and add new database name this student db so now student db has been created now let's go here click the database and then right click it and click on new query. So in this window, in the new query window, so you have to add these lines of code. So create table students, and we have a student ID field here, first name, last name, date of birth, gender, and grade. Right, so I have now executed it successfully. So there should not be any semicolon in the end, right? Otherwise you will get an error. And once you have done this, the table should be created. Let's refresh this. You can see a table has been created. Let's verify the columns. You can see that all these fields has been created here. And a primary key also has also been created. So let's close this. and go back to our form. Now here, you have to add few controls, then copy that, those. So this will be my first name, last name. This is the grade. And now I need a combo box. So this will be my gender. Let's keep it here. And then I need a date time picker, which will be this one. And then finally, I need a data grid view
then let's uh, drop some level controls here So the text first for the first one is uh, first name. Then last name. Date of birth. So this date of birth is the last one, so so it should be here. And this is my grid. And this is grid. For the gender, you have to add, go to the items property and here add male, female. Now let's name, give a name to all these controls. So this is txt first name. CMB gender txt grade and date time picker DOB so DG students so now we have given name to all our controls here so let's go to the load event let's delete this here you have to add uh, system dot data dot SQL client now you need to add a reference as well uh, to the you need to import the DLL which is the NuGet package so right click this manage NuGet packages you will arrive on this screen so go to browse and here select So system.data.sql client, select this, install, accept. Now this has been installed. So here you have to declare few variables first. So one variable is the connection string, which is basically, uh, which will refer to your database. So this is local DB, MS SQL local DB. So this, is the, so this should be the path. This is the name, name of the database and this is integrated security is equal to true. So name of the database you have seen already. Now let's, let me show you the, the SQL server here. So you can see that this is the server local db ms sql local db and that is what you have to mention here 
now you need to add a method called as load students which will be called from the form load event so let's copy and call it from here so whenever whenever the form is loaded the grid will be refreshed with the uh, information that we have in the students table so it will get all those things and then it will load the data grid let's now add uh, let's now add some code for the add button so go back to the design now here well, here we have to add three buttons, which will be add, update, and delete. So go back to the design and in the toolbox, search for button. or we can place them here better so name these buttons like button add which will be so this will be actually add name will be here which is button add this will be a button update text will be update this will be delete so we have now three buttons add update delete double click add now this is the code that will insert the records so first is the query which will insert into students table so this is the query now you have to create a command object which is basically a SQL command object and using the SQL command object you have to add some parameters first name last name date of birth gender grade then you have to open the connection and then you have to execute the query which will execute this one so execute the query and then uh, show a message that student added successfully then clear fields we will implement this method so i will write some code to clear the fields and then again load students so call this load students method which is here so call this method so that again the grid will be refreshed and if there is an error so we are using try catch exception here right so try catch finally end so in the catch if there is an error we will show the error message using a message box and finally close the connection and then exit so that's a method to add now this is the clear fields method which is which is basically clearing out all the data right whatever is there added so everything is then cleared out here next let's have, uh, add the code for the update method now this is the code for the update method you have to use the same kind of code which is basically the structure is same you just have to use a different query which is update students this time and you have to provide all the uh, all these parameters here and then add the parameters and the corresponding values for those parameters to the sql command object then execute the query before that open the connection and unsuccessful execution show a success message and again clear fields load students and then if there is an exception then you have to show this message and then finally close the connection so that's the update of the student's record next we have to implement the delete so go to the form load form go to the form and then click on double click on this delete now this is the code for the delete event so we are checking here if the count is greater than zero which means if there are any records then only delete it and then get the current row and the student id for that particular row and then use this query delete from students where student id is equal to this particular parameter now you have to again create a command object and add that parameter which is used here add that parameter here open the connection execute the query and then again success you have to you have to show this message on success then load students and this time there is no clear because obviously you are not entering anything in the test boxes 
or the controls that are provided uh, on top of that grid. So you're not entering anything, you're just deleting one record. So that's why there is no need to call the clear fields. Then if there is an exception, again, show that exception message, close the connection. And if there are no students to delete, then show this message. This is the additional else statement here. So now we have written code for add, delete and update. So now you have to add some code for the data grid so that when records are added and you select one of these rows, then whatever records are there in that row, whatever data is there in that uh, row, that should appear here so that we can update it easily. So go back here to the code and add this particular event, which is the underscore cell click event. So that will, uh, so that is the students dot cell click. It handles this particular event. So uh, here you can see, uh, I'm checking if there are uh, zero or more rows, then go here and populate all these controls with whatever cell values are there, whatever values are in the data grid row and the cells of those row. So get all those values and populate these controls. So once you have written that, uh, we are almost ready. Let's now run it. Let's add some records. So now you can see that this particular student has been successfully added. Let's add a few more. So now we have three student records here. So let's now select this particular record and update this record. So let me update the last name to something else and then click on update. So student updated successfully, click on okay. And then you can see the grid is also reflecting the updated record. Let's go to the database and see what is happening there. So SQL Server, right click this and view data. So you can see all these records has been added and this is what is being shown in the grid. So our update and add is working, working correctly. So the next thing we, we want to do is delete a record. So let's select this and then click on delete. Now you can see the second record is gone. Now only two records are appearing. Let's go back to the database. View data, you can see only two records are appearing here. So that's how you use this code to uh, manage the student records and uh, you can update, delete, add. You can enhance this code. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please let me know and do subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you very much.